Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Season 2, Episode 6 of The Expanse. This episode is called Paradigm Shift. I felt like the paradigm has shifted several times already <laughs> in this series. And I'm absolutely loving it. One of the things I most loved about Episode 5 was the conversation the Rosinante team were having kind of led by Naomi where they were trying to work out which of the rules of physics still applied to the protein molecule and I, I just loved it and and not because I am I'm some like amazing scientist I'm, I'm really not but I love sci-fi and I like learning about science and I like the scientific approach I really respect it and to see characters actually working through that moment of okay well what does this mean and um let's do a quick calculation and we would expect to see these kind of emissions and we're seeing these okay so that's in place just... the geopolitical conversations that were happening back on earth at the united nations where you had the kind of hawkish approach of the generals versus afasarala's approach which is look facts first you know let's not get hysterical what is actually happening is mars maneuvering no you know what sense does this attack would this attack even have none okay you know can we open communications to mars let's have a conversation about it you know let's get in contact with the guy on the ship let's talk to fred johnson it's just like oh my god avasarala was like the politician that we all need but so rarely get in life you know she is imperfect we've already seen her torturing a belter in that moment when when the crunch came she was f just phenomenal and she wasn't just phenomenal as a political leader she was phenomenal as a wife as well but, you know that conversation with her and arjun just was like oh that is what love is as far as i'm concerned really like you are extraordinary this is the cost of being with someone who's extraordinary and i'm paying it because I wouldn't want you to be any less than you are. Again, particularly with that gender dynamic too, is, is rarely shown. And if it is, it's normally kind of some story about how the guy's feeling, you know, dealing with emasculation of a, of a woman doing these things. And I'm glad we just moved right. That wasn't even what it was about. That wasn't there. It was, it was about a Vassarala wrestling with, you know, the two most important things in her life. And Arjun supporting her in that and saying, look, don't make me one of the things you need to deal with. I'm proud of you and you don't ever have to apologise to me. Loved it. It's really curious now to see how the lay of the land looks after this incident. What happens with the Rosinante? Do Mars now know that the, about the Rosinante, that it was their Martian ship? What was it, the Tachi? And it's been converted. Can they keep the ship? Are Mars going to want the ship back? Do they have to go back to Earth? Do they have to go and talk to the UN now? Because they're going to have to explain the build up to this. And where do we go from here? Is there going to be a move on Mao? Is Avasarala going to now expose the game? Is she not going to move quickly enough? And is she going to get outflanked by Mao? Who's Mao's new patron? Mars? some other earth billionaire wow don't know but that's the speed at which my brain is working when i'm going down the line of potential outcomes what's the fate of the protein molecule we know we've already got the stuff that we hid which we'd established anyway in in last episode um my question about the protein molecule stuff that kind of the miller and julie mao is is that element of the protein molecule gone? I don't know. I'm not completely confident. And what's the impact of this sort of massive hit on Venus? Is this going to affect the way that the planets in the solar system relate to each other? Are there going to be broader physical impacts of what happened to Venus that kind of ricochet across the solar system? Don't know. I could not believe what I was seeing with the way that the protein molecule developed inside of Eros. You guys know how excited I have been about getting back into Eros and seeing what was done there and and how it's developed. I was basically more excited than um the 
the scientist, but seeing it just blew my mind. Like the all of the blue, and I just loved. I've honestly watched it back about four or five times now, and just like every time I get this feeling of going from like terror in the first part of the episode, which is like, no, Miller's gonna die, Miller's gonna die, to almost envying Miller, because you're like, he is so alive right now, he is ha just seeing something no one else has ever seen, he's gonna have this experience none of us have ever experienced, he's like becoming something as much as he's dying, this is fantastic, so I wasn't, like, I wasn't sad crying, by the end of the episode, I was like moved to my bones crying of just this guy who has been so cynical and so resigned and mistaken that for wisdom some of the time, when it's not, finds his purpose, finds faith in something, in someone, in Julie Mao just from hearing about her and we end up where we end up and Julie who's also someone who's searching for purpose and meaning who's also searching for love who's also searching like f to find a way to make a profound difference to the world and these two characters just come together at the perfect moment and give each other exactly what they've both been seeking all of their lives, just by existing. Not by doing anything, but simply by existing. For me, really one of the most amazing contained love stories that I've seen. It was really amazing. And and I get how re-watching the show would be different now. And that's what I think about when something happens that surprises you. That it brings meaning, additional meaning, to things that came before it. It doesn't shatter them. We've had this conversation on the channel before. And what that did for me was meant that I could now re-watch to this point. And have an even deeper, broader experience of watching than watching it the first time. Which is just fantastic. So those are kind of the big things for me for now. I'm going to get into this episode now because I want to see what's going on. So, let's have at it. Wow. It's so cool now that you know Tycho Station and Mars and Earth and those things that you're actually recognising what's happening in the title sequence. As I remember in the first episode, it was just really pretty chaos. And now it's like, oh, okay, that's Tycho, that's... Ooh, Mars. Mars had been a colony for a long time, and it was what? filled with the best scientists and technologists humanity had to offer. We were ready to govern ourselves and start Wait. a new nation of our own. Pools. That was the weirdest fucking thing. I noticed that Deimos just suddenly appeared, and I was like, why's the, why's the moon just come back in the sky? And then it said 137 years ago, and now I've realized that all of the lights retracted, so it's taking us back in there. Oh, God, I fucking love this show. Oh, play. But everything we built, or mined, or made, was still the property of old Mother Earth. I was a fusion drive engineer. My wife, Katie, wanted to start having babies, like all good Martians do. But I convinced her that we should buy a second-hand yacht for me to tinker around with instead. And the voice interface had been problematic from the start. The original owner was Chinese, so... I turned the damn thing off. The rest, I guess... Is history. <laughs> My name's Solomon Epstein, <laughs> and I changed everything. Okay, Mr. Epstein. This was a wake up call. Whatever it was, it's clearly the greatest technological leap since the Epstein Drive. We love you, Mr. Epstein! Ryan, you're the best! And if it is a weapon, given the depleted state of our missiles, 
It's a weapon that will conclusively tilt the balance of power in favor of Marx. Mr. Nante and James Holden have gone silent, along with Fred Johnson and the Martian government. So we'll just have to be insightful on our own. <laughs> Where are we on the impacts? We commandeered a civilian survey vessel and are refitting it with our best sensors and probes. If there's anything left of Eros down there, we'll find it. We'll be on our way to Venus in a week. Wow. Next on our list of shit we need to clean up, 150 missiles we launched. So far, sir, we've confirmed aboard on 121 missiles. Tracking has been very difficult, but we're confident we'll be able to account for all the rest in short order. Everyone writes watching a Vassarada like a hawk. So I don't know if you've heard or if you're even going to get this, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm okay. And that this time, I didn't run from the fight. The people on this ship, my friends, help save Earth. I hope you get to meet them someday. One in particular. Love your mom. You still want to destroy our sample? Yeah. Why? Wow. Now more than ever. Miller wanted to destroy it too, you know. Miller told me he trusted us to do the right thing. And we did. Hmm. I wonder if he knew that his trip to Eros would be one way. I think part of him never left that terrible little room where we found Julie. I don't think Miller wanted to be saved. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know that Naomi and I are together, sleeping together. When did it start? Just after we got out of Eros. <sighs> I knew it. <laughs> I told you, arrows, did I say? Yeah. All right, go ahead, take a shot. Bro, what the hell was that? Hey, was... That's because I like you, brother. He said it was a punk. Oh, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd do her if she let me. <laughs> I'm glad we had this talk. I'll show you something. This is all the telemetry of the nukes the UN launched against Eros. Nearly 30 of them kept on going long after all the others aborted. Where are they now? That's the million dollar question. Well, I got no clue. Rossi lost track of them when we were chasing Eros. Have they kept some? 30 of them didn't get that self destruct message. Oh shit. They just kept on going. Who knows where? Fred. I think Fred and Kamina might have them. <laughs> a once in a generation breakthrough. And that was the whole problem. See, a high G burn hurts like hell. I felt like someone was standing on my chest. It was getting harder for me to breathe or talk. <laughs> oh! Oh, shit! The most dangerous thing about being in a high G burn is that if it goes on too long, it'll kill you. Holy shit! That was amazing. Eero Station was under quarantine, the result of a, of a mysterious bioweapon unleashed by Mars, which Mars believes was unleashed by us, which we did not. Did we? We did not. Oh, I never doubted that for a moment. Suddenly, Eros, the entire asteroid, moves. Doesn't make any sense at all that Mars would want to test their groundbreaking technology in a biohazard zone that they themselves created. I suppose not. So what if this bioweapon isn't a bioweapon after all? What if it is responsible in some way we can't yet fully understand for Eris moving? I believe the Eris incident was our first contact with alien life. I have a file with 900 pages of analysis and contingency plans for war with Mars. I file for what to do if an advanced alien species comes calling. 
It's three pages long, and it begins with step one, find God. <laughs> I need to get to Venus. You can pull the strings and get me on that ship. I will be your eyes and your ears. I'll be your own private back channel to everything we find unfiltered by Janice and Aaron Wright. Come on, do it. Please. Shit and hell. I like him. What's his name? Tank? Oh, Josephus Miller, with his final word, he said to me, you are the future, Diogo. You must continue the fight for the belt. You think helping to save Earth would balance things out, but the Mormons don't think like that. They filed a lawsuit over the Naboo against the Tycho Corporation and myself. Basically, I'm in some deep shit. <laughs> These aren't rock hopper mining nukes. These are planet busters. If the wrong person picks them up, it could be a problem. Especially if they're smart enough to remove the countermeasures. The missiles could be retargeted and sent right back at the inners. Or anyone else in the system, for that matter. Have they got them? This doesn't seem to be bothering you. Why is that? Because I've got the missiles. <laughs> we could use some help removing the countermeasures. The only thing those weapons are good for is first strike. But they're good for a lot of things. They can be used as deterrents or a bargaining chip. Earth and Mars are still in the dark about the protomolecule. We need to tell them everything we know about it. And exactly what should we tell them? Eros changed everything. Earth and Mars are scared. And whenever that happens, belters always lose. Our first priority is to protect ourselves. And that means we're going to take advantage of every edge we've got. I can't blame him. I mean, he's, that's what he needs to do, right? Mila, do this for you. I tell you, girl, if I had flown any faster, I would have caught up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Need to two team shifts. Here in the Gotek for Dan recycle. Go back for the cockatoo. I ain't been less to me not to spawn to. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, Hold on there, partner. Whoa. Better back off and settle down, you hear? Please. Oh. Oh. What the hell? Whoa. Amos? Yes. Jesus Christ, Amos. Don't fuck with Amos. Hey. Hey. Oh, no, no, no. You two enjoy yourself. <laughs> All right, Dylan, it's all right. Mm. I want to know where you and I stand. Would have thought that was pretty clear by now. It isn't. Now I'm in streak with you. I have done exactly what I said I was going to do. But now I'm getting the feeling that <laughs> you're not being straight with me. Well, I understand paranoia is a natural state of mind for a soldier. On your way back. You cut thrust for nearly five hours. What for? Even poking through our nav logs? Yeah, you got me curious. On the way out, Amos was forced to kill a friend of Miller's. They needed some time to work through that. And then Miller wanted to give his friend a proper burial at sea, which means that it's none of your goddamn business. We want the same thing, you know. We're on the same team. Yeah, that's the thing with all of you. Earth, Mars, the Belt, the OPA. It's all bullshit. There shouldn't be any teams. It's a beautiful dream, son. And I hope I'm around to see it come true. But in this world that we live in, in order to survive, you have to pick a side. No. <sighs> My drive was burning, my fuel was gonna last for weeks. Which I have to say was amazing. Aside from the fact that I'd be dead long before then. Even though I couldn't talk, Katie would realize that I was in trouble. She she'd figure out a way to help me. Fucking hell. It was my only hope. My last chance. It's not gonna work out with it. Yeah. Out. Oh. And I blew it. Oh. 
He's still working. I do you know what? I forgot all about him. I think we should let people know about Miller and Julie Mao. Not all the details. Nothing about the proto molecule, just about them. A belter and an earther who was an OPA member that sacrifice themselves to save the cradle of humanity. The inners need to hear that. You're going to turn them into a story. A love story. Might help cool things down a bit. I want people to know about Miller. He was a good man. He was a pain in the ass, suicidal ex-cop. He's both. Who got the job done? OK, I'll do it. We can give our sample to Mars. What? No, at least I saw something real nasty going on down there, and they just wanted to keep Earth out of it. Or keep what they found there a secret. Mars is the best scientist in the system. If anyone can think of something good to do with that shit, it's them. Since when has Mars done anything that wasn't in the interest of Mars? They saved our lives so, for starters. Well, well, if any side believes... Of course, I think this is a really bad idea. Because Mars is absolutely 100% focused on terraforming Mars and being able to live and enjoy the planet and I think would be probably about the most receptive group of people to Dresden's pitch about being able to live anywhere and do anything and basically speed up evolution. So rather than their approach, which has been to kind of evolve the terraforming of Mars to meet their requirements as a species, they can change themselves. This is bad. Mars Mars is gonna go full speed ahead in developing the protein molecule. They are not a safe pair of hands on this. Seriously, come on. You can have a strategic advantage by using the proto molecule, then eventually someone will. And then we're gonna have another Eros or worse. Mm. The only way to prevent that is to destroy it. It's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. But what if... Oh, pause. But what if their attempt to now backtrack to it or destroy it is going to raise attention and then they lose control of it? I just think they have to leave it. But then if Fred's got their logs, he's going to be trawling that area looking for this thing. I know everyone says space is big, but that's the point. He's narrowing it down. Because he's got the travel logs from the Rosinante. So there is basically like a piece of string. <sighs> this was my concern. I think I'd blow it up. I think I would blow it up. But it would need a mission that basically meant we go straight there and we immediately blow it up. There's no talking, there's no waiting to be found out by somebody else. That's, I think, where I'd be playing. I'm right about this. very worried that I'm on Jim's side on something because Jim is normally wrong, Naomi is normally right. We're missing something. It's done. It's done. I don't think it is. Either she's lying or does it... I knew it! She's lying! Naomi, no! It's just washing this guy. And a sustained high G burn, what usually kills you is a stroke. Oh, oh God. I'd never give Katie a child, but she had the plans for my drive. Wow. They'd make her rich for the rest of her life. Because with my drive, the Epstein drive, 
Mars would be able to move outward, colonize the belt, and remake the solar system. My drive would give us the edge we needed to finally break free from Earth and build a new world for ourselves. That's the wonderful and terrible thing about technology. It changes everything. Oh my God. Damn. These are little Martians. Oh, my sweet summer child. Do you really believe Earth is going to try to take this station? Why else would we be here? To guard soybeans, apparently. You wanted action, Stickman. You got it. Is this what passes for action with you Navy types, sir? You know, I really hope Eros was our tech. Be nice to have something in our back pocket to turn Earth to slag if need be. Well, fortunately for our species, no human being is dumb enough to put you in charge, Hillman. <laughs> <laughs> May we shoot the soybeans, sir? Only if they shoot first. Hmm? We'll shout to you. You in the mood to talk? What about? About the friends we choose to keep. Like Jules Pierre Maum. He's a good man, Christian. Have you had any contact with him? No. I have no idea where he is. We need to know what he knows. You should convince him to come in from the cold. How am I supposed to do that? He trusts you. And if he helps us, he can keep a semblance of the life he's always known. Why, well, gloves are off. You're really willing to cut him a deal? Yes and for anyone who could help us understand what we're dealing with. We both know how the world works. Wow. When the stakes are this high, many things are possible. Shit. I can reach out to his family. Maybe they can help him turn himself in. Good. And please let them know that if they can't, I will rain hellfire down on them all. I will freeze their assets, cancel their contracts, cripple their business. And I have the power to do it, because I am the fucking hero who helped save Mother Earth from the cataclysm that Jules Pierre Mao unleashed. Tell his children that government is more powerful than any corporation. Mm -hmm. And by the time they can pull the strings to force me out, it will be too late. Their family will be ruined. Their mother, the children, their children, all of them hunted and on the run for the rest of their days until we find them and nail each and every last one to the wall. Make sure you tell them that. Holy shit! Oh my, whoa, she's not playing. Jesus Christ, you don't even know why I'm mad at you, do you? Yeah, because I took care of that guy who was kicking your ass and I made you look weak. Is that what you think? The way I see it, there's only three kinds of people in this world. Bad ones, ones you follow, and ones you need to protect. But so I'm the one you need to protect, is that right? Yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I had a breaching pod where 25 people get blown to pieces in order to protect you. I'm a big boy, Amos. I fought my own battles. Wow. He was getting his ass kicked, then. A lot of missiles' countermeasures trickle back up power from the guidance systems. OK. Thanks. I wasn't expecting your help. Belters have to help each other. No one else will. Mogufo told you check the suki devil. Kevin to penser it told him. And tell me ready. Ah! Oh my god! I saw it, the Epstein Drive Technologies. Stickman, this is Overwatch. 
We're heading into Ganymede's shadow. We will be in visual blackout for the next 48 minutes. Continue patrol and do not linger on the border. This is Stigma 1, understood. And it's definitely unarmed. Probably just an unlicensed ag drone from one of the greenhouses. What? What? Oh shit, what's going on? Six Marines, about 2.3 clicks out on foot, closing fast. They appear to be charging us. <gasps> <gasps> They're jamming us! Shoot them! Shoot them, Mars! Stickman, are you under attack? Come again, Stickman. No. God damn it, I need a surface visual now! Fuck! What is happening? Who is this? Oh shit! What's them? Are they running from something? Are they shooting behind them? They're shooting behind them! I don't even think this is what it looks like. What the fuck is it? Oh, what's going on? I can't believe we're doing this. Shit. This war now. Whatever happened, this war now. Shit. I feel like this has got mouse fingerprints all over it. Oh, what the fuck? Dead, Dave. Who is? Everybody, Dave. I'm not. Looks like a poor monocle being. I don't understand what just happened. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch another one today. Oh shit. That was so, 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 so good. It's been a couple of hours. I had to go off to do a meeting and um and come back and film this a little bit later in the day. All I've been thinking about is this. This was so good. This was such a brilliant episode. I was actually grateful for the time to think about it because I was just trying to piece together all of the, the different events. But it looks like Naomi has, I guess for now, betrayed the team. She's told Jim that she is, uh, you know, that the rest of the protein molecule is gone. But what we know is that that missile never fired. <sighs> so now I'm worried about what that means. Jim is not going to stand for this when he finds out. He will not be able to cope with her having lied to him. 
I really wish I spoke enough Belter to understand what Naomi was talking about to Kamina Drummer later on when she said Belters need to stick together. That felt like she was speaking about more than just a generalisation that Belters should stick together, especially in the context of the missiles. So I'm wondering what of those two got cooking up I'm in anyway. I, I I love the chemistry between those two. It's kind of sexy. It's funny. Like there's a sort of yeah yeah sisterhood going on. So we'll see how that plays out. I love the showdown, little show, mini showdown with Fred Johnson and Jim. That was fantastic. Uh, as always, I love Jim's optimism, and we're actually not that far apart. Me and Jim in sort of nine out of ten moments. But that's probably why I find him the most frustrating to watch because we have quite a few similarities in kind of the things that I get frustrated about myself for doing. Jim does and so I'm extra hard on Jim for, for being that way. But I did, I really did enjoy that showdown. I thought it was funny. I thought it was on point. And I like the kind of development of Jim. The more decisions he has to make, the more responsibility that he has to take. He's finding out more about who he is and what's most important to him and it's it's really not a world away from where he started but it's like he kind of said on the call to his mum like he didn't run away this time he actually stood and and fought and I think that's a really big deal for him and I actually think the relationship with Johnson is all the more interesting because of actually Johnson is a man of principle too and I think he sees that in Jim but I'm not sure Jim sees that in Fred, he obviously is missing a huge part of Fred's backstory, but I like it. I also think that the scripting and dialogue is fantastic uh, in this show. Really very believable conversations. Talking of which, over on Earth and the UN and all that shenanigans, we had the introduction of um, Dr. Iturbi. As um, Iturbi pointed out, they're kind of working with what they know. But what just happened is outside the realms of what they know. It's what they don't know they don't know. And I love the way that he presented that to Avasarala over the dinner of just like, look, we got to be radical about this. What if? And Avasar's, Avasarala's reaction was fucking hilarious and absolutely true to her character as well. So she's going to take some convincing. But the point is, she's going to have a man on the ground doing the research. So we're, we should know. I think fairly soon, knowing the way that this show moves, it's got it moves at a pace. This show, we're gonna know what's what's going on there in the not too distant future. So I'm really excited about that. Then we had a Vassarella's conversation with Erin Wright, which was like subtext a clock. What she was saying to him was, "Listen, buddy, this is your last fucking chance." Given the stakes of where everything is at right now, you help us take down Mao and you, you're going to get yourself a pretty good deal. But I swear to God, if you fuck with me one more time, I will burn you to the ground. Uh, I just, I loved it. She was, you know, you can see what she's saying is true about the Maos. That is absolutely true what she is saying. But at the same time, a second conversation is happening directly between her and Aaron Wright. It was beautiful, beautiful. I loved every single second of that. And it will be interesting to see how Erin Wright responds because I would not want to fuck with a Vassarala. But we've not seen Erin Wright play his full game yet. So I'll reserve judgment until I've seen where he goes next. But I don't think he's in any doubt about the stakes right now. That was pretty clear. And then, of course, we have Gatmead. We've got our lovely Martians who we're getting to know. I'm quite invested in Team Martian, as you guys well know by now. I, I would have been on Team Martian. And what happens? Everybody's dead. Sutton is dead. Saeed is dead. Travis is dead. Hillman is dead. And Draper, I think, is probably dead. But what the fuck happened? 
like I could see ships attacking the Martian kind of infrastructure and I assumed that that was Mao's new people mounting an attack and then disappearing and in all of the confusion you know no one would have an idea but the but I think that earth side on the ground were running from the proto molecule person people I don't know because they were firing backwards they weren't firing ahead they weren't charging I think they were just running really quickly away from what they could see behind them proto molecule person but then what the fuck was in the sky sure is that the what i'm trying to work out is is this just an extraordinary coincidence which doesn't strike me as possible but if it's not a coincidence then that would mean that the ships were pro, were proto molecule based and the proto molecule attacked with a fleet of ships and a ground invasion, which is just, it feels like a fucking escalation. was so good but those are my options and i'm not going to be able to settle on anything it could have been mao's new patron attacking upstairs while the proto molecule attacked downstairs which feels like the thing that i saw except that's very that's a heck of a coincidence and how did the proto molecule thing get down on the ground in ganymede where did it come from and what proto molecule is it is it our pro is it is it, like, was that Miller or Junior Mao? Oh my God. That was so good. Oh my God, that was so good. I want to watch it all again. And then I want to watch all of the episodes back to back. But I can't. It was, oh, I don't even know what to say. Let's just carry on the conversation in the comments. Don't tell me stuff. And that includes, oh, wait till you see the next episode. Don't. <laughs> Restrict yourselves to what is going on in this episode. And please do not tell me anything that I am not supposed to know at this point. And I appreciate your patience. <sighs> this show. Right. Until the next time. Bye-bye.